Hey you guys, Desmond here. And Lucretia. And welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Today we are here we are here to discuss RuPaul's Drag Race. All Stars 8, Episode 8. We're on episode 8 now, aren't we? I think so. Maybe. That sounds about right. Uh Forensic yes. Queens. So what did we think of this episode altogether, Miss Ma'am? It was funny. It was such a good episode. It, it really was a was. really good episode. <laughs> really good. And honestly, I'll say this now and I'll say it again later. I think this is the best acting challenge like we've ever had. Yeah. Like, honestly, nobody did bad. Nobody. No, nobody did really bad. I don't, I don't think anybody did bad. There was one, in my opinion, who wasn't as good as the others, but I wouldn't say she was bad. Yeah. But we'll definitely get into that. But before we get into the episode, I want to remind everyone to like, comment, and subscribe because we really appreciate that. Make sure you check yes, out the new Instagram page, Kresha underscore Desmond. It should be in the description of this video. Come show us some love there. We already got a few of our friends following it. So, yep. Let's, we let's even got some queens following it. That, that's, that's what I was referring to. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, go ahead and support the channel. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's get into this gig. So we start off after James Mansfield elimination. Mm -hmm. They come in. They're reading the message. They say, we're going to miss you. And they sit down. Now, the queens basically um, talk. Well, they first they congratulate Candy. Kahana then once again. <laughs> has an issue opening the box. And watch me get there and not be able to open that box either. And I'm sitting here making fun of Kahana. And this mm. whole time I ain't even able to get the box open. <laughs> now Lala Reed, she she killed me this episode. She really did. <laughs> so once we found out that everyone voted for James, of course Kahana was very thankful for that. And mm -hmm. um Era well the ones who spoke, Alexis was like, You had a win. Yeah, it was your third time in the bottom, but you still had a win. Same thing I mentioned last week. If we want to talk about mm -hmm. track record, James still don't have a win. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what Alexis was talking about. And then Lala just chimed in and said, I'm just going to choose whoever I want that week. Th that part. And honestly, th that kind of sounds like me because each week I'm telling you something different I would do. <laughs> Whatever I'm Yeah, feeling. this week I went off track record. Last week I just went on a feeling. This week I went off. I'm just trying to fuck with you. <laughs> Next week I'm not going to send my girl home. The following week, yep. oh, I can't send somebody black home. Like, it's just going to be something different each and every time. But yeah, La La Ree was the star of this episode, to say the least. Oh, Lord, yes. So The entrances. <laughs> yes, so we go into the next day, um, and the queens walk into the workroom. They're sitting and chatting, and RuPaul walks in. And RuPaul announces that this week they will be improv and that's another thing, while I'm so impressed with this, they improv this. Mm -hmm. This is a improv challenge called Forensic Queen. There, there's going to be a list of characters and a brief description of who that person is, and then from there, mm -hmm. they got to go. And RuPaul decides that they're going to pick their own teams. I mean, they pick their own roles again. Which, I, honestly, I miss when RuPaul be like, oh, Candy, you won last week's challenge, so you get to assign the roles. Yeah. I miss that. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy the drama of them picking themselves. Uh-huh. But I miss that. Or there's a mini challenge. They're like, oh, Jessica Wilde, you won the mini challenge, so therefore you get to assign the roles. Yeah. I miss that. I do. <laughs> But you know what I really miss? What do you really miss? The reading challenge. We ain't got one this season. Y yeah, I thought we were going to get one like either this week or last week. I really it was thought reading, it was going like... to be this week. Because I'm like, this will be still a good amount of queens to do the reading challenge with. Nope. Nope, no reading challenge. No reading challenge. And another thing, the episodes aren't adding up. We are at five queens left. And like, there's still like four episodes to go. What what is because we know there's gonna be twelve episodes. What the hell is gonna happen in these last few episodes? I am confused. Hmm. Is there gonna be another episode where nobody goes home? That's the only thing 
that makes sense in my head that there has to be another episode where nobody goes home. And even then, that I don't think that's still enough to make it at least a top three. So I'm like, what is going on in these streets? What is going on? But I think I the know, maybe somebody game, else comes back and leaves again. Maybe. No, well, maybe. I didn't even think about somebody coming back and leaving. So thank you. That, that that adds up to where they can at least do a top three if somebody comes back and leave again. But anyway, so uh, the queens now have to sit down and assign their roles because um, the forensic challenges. What then happened to Little Pound Cake? <laughs> the creation of Alaska and Lanasha Sparks. Side note, can we get Lanasha Sparks for All Stars 9, please? Please. I, I, I don't ask for much because there was a heavy rumor that she was going to be on All Stars 8. And I was kind of salty that she wasn't. So, since we got that name out there, can we contact Lanesha, please? <laughs> see if she wants to come back. Because, honey, I would love to see her again. And hopefully this time they'll do her right. Because they did her dirty. They did her dirty on season five. I don't care what nobody says. Argue with your mama. They did her dirty. Anyway, the queen sit down. And everybody, you know, pretty much quickly assigns the roles. Like, oh, I want this one. I want to do that one. And then we get down to the security guard. Not the security guard. That was the what Lala and Alexis wanted. So Lala gave it. Well, Lala pretty much said, I want this role. So Alexis was like, okay, you can have it. I'm also interested in the detective. Well, guess who mm-hmm. else was interested in the detective? Candy. Candy Muse. <laughs> so they start having a conversation. And you know what really irritated me about this? You know, I love my girl Alexis. Like, this whole season, she's been giving me what I need when it comes to the drama. Uh-huh. But she really tried to gaslight like Candy into taking that other position. She was like, well, they're both practically the same role. So, like, you can just do that one. And I love how Candy was like, no, nah, if they're practically the same role, then why don't you want the the, uh, the lawyer, the, the attorney, whatever you want to call her? Uh-huh. Don't play with me. And that, that would have been me. I would have hit it back. Well, if it's pretty much the same thing, then do that one. Exactly. If it's the same thing, then why are you tripping with me? I haven't won the other role. Mm-hmm. So eventually Alexa's is like, you know what, Candy, you can have that role. I will do the attorney. Mm-hmm. And immediately afterwards, the waterworks start. Well, like, what's with all the crying? Baby, she is an emotional creature. And again, I lived for it. But I can just imagine being in the workroom. Honestly, I probably would have the same reaction Candy did. Like, girl, what is... Come on. Like, what is this? <laughs> girl. You I, trying I, to paint me as, like, the mean black woman. And I'm like, no, I would have got up and left, too. I ain't gonna lie to you, baby. Get away from me. Mm-hmm. I ain't got time for this. So, you know, Alexis is crying. She's upset. Jimbo comforts her. She goes off. She has her moment. Jessica's over it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I loved it. Jessica was over it. She was over it. I would have been over it too, honey. But I would have been smiling about it. Like, girl, get, go home. Go that home. Part. So once Alexis calms down, mm-hmm. Kahana starts up. And, you know, she's sitting there. And, you know, she's in her head. Because, yet again, this is another acting challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, an and they, challenge. they have been coming hit after hit after hit. And, you know, she's been in the bottom for each acting challenge that she's done. Yeah. So it's just like, I honestly would feel the same way. I'm like, well, fuck. So I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be in the bottom again. That's what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. Like, I, but I, you can't think like that because then you really will be in the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, but I ain't going to hold you. Um, after being in the bottom so many times for this particular challenge, I'm mm-hmm. listening right there. Same thing as her. Like, my Lord. My Lord. I, how, how am I gonna do this? What what is going? What what am I going to do differently than what I did last time? And then Kahana makes the decision that she wants to leave the competition. Woo! So she gets up, she starts packing up her stuff, mm. getting it all together, and then enters RuPaul. Baby, as Lala already said, y'all don't have RuPaul coming here during her break? Mm-hmm. Like, she's supposed to be producing right now. Now she got to come back in front of the camera? Mm-hmm. Baby, and everybody's face was gagged. Smacked. They're like, uh-oh. They knew they were in trouble. Like, wait, RuPaul just walked in here. 
Mm-hmm. And like RuPaul's, unannounced. And I, I love when RuPaul was like, "Where are we staying? Over here? Over here? Which camera? What's up? What's up?" Because <laughs> maybe we need we need to get this shit together, okay? <laughs> and she, the queens are coming over, and she gives them a prep talk. She's like, "Listen, do not mistake she got your them feelings. together. Do not mistake your feelings for facts." And as part as a part of me wants to believe that, but sometimes your feelings are the fact. Like in Kahana's case, she's been in the bottom of every acting challenge. You hand her another mm-hmm. acting challenge, how else is she supposed to feel? It's a fact that she's been in the bottom for each acting challenge. So the feelings are according. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I did overall like the message, like da da, you know, keep going. It is hard. Mm-hmm. They understand, blah, blah, blah. And part of me wonders if she would have done this when Heidi was trying to leave. Mm-hmm. What if would Heidi have stayed? Me personally, I don't think so. I don't think so either. But you know, somebody brought that question up on uh, Twitter, and I'm like, huh. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I don't personally think so because just hearing the other stuff she had going on. Like, yeah, even if she there were, were a lot of outside factors, yeah, even it if wasn't she just wasn't the competition. Even if she was judged fairly, I still think mm-hmm. she would have stepped out when she did. Yeah. But the speech worked and Kahana decided to stay in the competition. And I thought it was really sweet that she sat down with Jimbo and Jimbo was giving her all these tips. And I'm like, oh, look at Jimbo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jimbo both- said, wait a minute. I know you guys are clocking the favoritism. Let me show you I've earned it. And I'm like, yeah, she's definitely winning. They're showing the soft side of her. I remember when they started doing that with Aquaria. I'm like, oh, she's winning the season. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I I see what we're doing here. But it is now time for Forensic Queens. What had happened to Lil Pound Cake? So, uh, first we had Jessica Wilde as Yura Drag. Yara Drag. So, what do we think of Jessica in the challenge overall? Um, she had some good hits, like, as far as, like, laughs are concerned. I think she was not quite as over the top as she should have been. I think she did an amazing job. I think she was just the right level. Especially uh-huh. since she was playing the former uh, Miss, Con- Con- Miss Congeniality. I can't speak upon today. <laughs> so, you know, some people take that title to heart. So coming back, you don't want to be over top because I am Miss Congeniality. You know what I'm saying? Right. Baby, when she said ETB card, I almost lost it. I, I was howling. Jessica, like, she had this character down. When she went off on that rant about Taco Tuesday and guacamole being extra, I'm mm, like, yeah, it, it was just too she. Good. She took the time to give her her character like a backstory. Yes, it it was too good. It was too good. I really enjoyed that. I really did. Up next is I'm a fox, played by Kahana Montrese. I thought she did a really good job here. She seemed like she was having a lot more fun oh, this time. Oh, a around. lot more fun. Honestly, and I've said this quite a few times this season, I don't agree with her placement in the judging. Hmm. I don't. We'll talk about it some more later. But I thought she did a great job. She uh, volleyed off the girls way much better this time. And I think this is the difference of trying to impersonate a celebrity and just trying to impersonate a character you came up with in your head. Right. Because you can interpret that character any kind of way. Yes. And when Candy... When they were sitting in the detective room and Candy said, where is the body? And Kahana said, Akira is the body? <laughs> Again. Oh, baby, I was done. I was <laughs> done. I'm like, yes. Y'all know Queens Everywhere is my favorite thing. One of my favorite <laughs> room mixes is, is Queens Everywhere. And baby, where is the body? Miss Akira is the body. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, what a way to round it out. And bring it back. <laughs> yes, and of course, you know, that's her season 11 sis. So I'm like, okay, okay, I live. I thought I thought this was really good. I, I thought it was really good. <laughs> so up next is La Lari playing Shari Coleman, the security guard. Mm. Who wasn't eloquent enough to be in the competition. <laughs> 
What do we Ellen think Bourne of Lala Reed? Are there words to express? <laughs> I thought she did a fantastic job. She was so good. Baby, she shined in this character. She said she was uh, pulling inspiration from her aunties. <laughs> and I'm like, I got some aunties like that too. I I, I know, I know, baby. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I need to call them and check up on them. But um, I thought she did a fantastic job. And honestly, I didn't see the twist coming that the security guard did it. You didn't? No, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I really, I truly thought it was the detective trying to cover her own tracks. Oh, dang. I really did. I really did. But yeah, Miss Eloquent here did an amazing job. Amazing. Up next is Anita Clue, portrayed by Candy Muse. I thought she did a good job here. I felt like she was playing Candy. Yeah, but she's always playing candy. She's always playing candy. She is. But she did a good job. Mm -hmm. She did a good job. Like, she did the job. She did the assignment. There was a few mm -hmm. laughs. That scene with her and Lala, when they were standing in the workroom and she was doing, getting the interview. And uh -huh. she repeated, eloquent. Okay. <laughs> I was like, yes. I thought this was really cute. Up next is Jimbo playing Eva Gents. Dents. What Evidence. do we think of Jimbo? Jimbo was Jimbo. I thought Jimbo was hilarious here. Jimbo was fucking funny. Like this character, the accent, like mm -hmm. the 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 shit finger. <laughs> like it was it was it all hit every box. I'm like, damn it, Jimbo. <sighs> She's like, you think there's favoritism. I've earned this. Well, I, I think there's been a lot of acting challenges this season more than usual. Yes. So, you know, to me, it seems like they're setting her up to shine. But hey. Hey. I, I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to watch the television program, okay? But I seize it, RuPaul. I seize you. I seize you. And then last but definitely not least, we have Alexis Michelle playing Effie Lee Bailey, the district attorney. Mm -hmm. This is the only character where she didn't do bad. Mm -hmm. But she was, out of all the groups, she was the, she was playing Weakest. it straight. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was playing uh -huh. it straight. She, there was nothing, nothing funny. No nuances. The only part, I think, with her that I chuckled is when she smelt Jimbo's finger. <laughs> That was the only part that really just made me chuckle with Alexa, with Alexis. Like I said, mm -hmm. she did a great job, but just compared to everybody else, everybody was else was like, yeah, everybody else was like A's and A pluses, and she was a B, which Ouch. is still good. But compared to everybody else, it wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. So this reenactment at the end with RuPaul. I cackled so hard. <laughs> I cackled so hard. I'm like, RuPaul, okay, Ru. And the Emmy goes too. <laughs> oh, when she jumped on top of Little Pound Cake and all the stuff that started coming out, I'm like, I, this was just, it was too good. Too good. Because at first I'm like, that ain't Lala. And then we got close. I'm like, oh, that's Ru that's RuPaul. That is <laughs> RuPaul in these streets. Okay. I thought this was really funny. So speaking of RuPaul, we are now on the main stage. And you better work. What do we think of this outfit? You know what? It was funny. <laughs> I love this outfit. Like, RuPaul, two weeks in a row, have mm -hmm. been killing it. Has been killing it. I think a cute little kitty cat wig would have uh, fit this look even better. Mm -hmm. But I, I really enjoyed this. She went for the Johnny Bravo look. Hey. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this. I re Side note, did you know Johnny Bravo was only like 17? 
He's supposed to be. Yeah, I heard he was only supposed to be like 15. Maybe I thought he was in his 20s growing up. I'm like, that is uh, right? a, that is a child. Anyway. <laughs> I love this look. Keep it up, RuPaul and Zaldi. Like, y'all are killing it. So, we are joined by Michelle Visage, Carson Cressley, and our special guest judge, Bl- I almost said black girl, bat girl, <laughs> Javicia Leslie. Oh. <laughs> now, I didn't watch Bat Girl. Now, it's on my list to watch because I'm trying to watch all the CW, you know, DC shows. So, I'm uh-huh. eventually get to Bat Girl. But I thought she was lovely. I really enjoyed her commentary. And I really enjoyed her moment in Untucked when she came in and talked with the queens. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a really cute moment. And we were happy to have you, sis. <laughs> so the, categ- the category is Miss Fill in the Blank. Mm. So, Lucretia, congratulations. You've been casted on RuPaul's Drag Race All Star Season 8. You get the prompt Miss Fill in the Blank. What? Are you bringing with you? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Miss Read em and Weep. <laughs> Miss Read em and Weep. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now, <laughs> technically, James Mansfield did what I did, but I wouldn't have called it Miss Queen of the Ring. I would have uh-huh. called it Miss Match. Because, you know, uh, in the wrestling, they have to have a match. Uh-huh. So I would have been mismatched, and I would have came out with a look inspired by uh, Mercedes Monet, or formerly known as Sasha Banks, for those who don't know. I think mm-hmm. I would have had a look inspired by one of her many amazing wrestling gears so that I can show off my fan of wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I'll just have to show James how it's really supposed to be done. So... Let's get into these looks. Uh, first, we have Miss Sausage Party, Jessica Wilde. What do we think of this look here? Woo. Um, I like the dress. I, I, I guess you get the sausage. It, it was funny her hold the sausage like a baby, though. Yeah, and to me, I love that the dress was yellow, so it just feels like she's the mustard for the hot dogs. That's huh? Good. Did you hear me? No. Oh, I said I love that her dress was yellow because yeah. it looks like she's the mustard for the hot dogs. <laughs> so I thought this was cute. I thought this was safe for the category. Yeah. But I thought this was cute. Up next is Miss Tired Ass Showgirl, Kahana Montrese. <laughs> this is stunning. Yes. I just wish you would have just said Miss Showgirl. Yeah. Or Miss Vegas Showgirl. Because yeah, it doesn't tired, fit the cause... prompt that you're giving us. Yeah. And then she tried to yawn and be like, mm, no, nah, sis. No, Ooh. if your clothes had been half hanging off of you or something, then that would have read more tired than you just yawning at the beginning of your walk. Yeah, like I, I wish she would have really went in with the tired ass showgirl, but she looks stunning. Mm-hmm. She looks stunning. She really do. Um, moving onwards <laughs> to La La Ree <laughs> as Miss Bootlegger. <laughs> Again, I hollered. I know this lady. I've bought DVDs from this lady. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I wonder how she is. <laughs> but what do we think of this look here? She was funny. It was real funny. It was real campy. I love the Asia O'Hara DVD. I had to get a screenshot of it. Uh Uh-huh. The Asia O'Hara DVD had me sold. I'm like, yep. Yep. This is it. That's it. This is it. (laughs) Asia O'Hara's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Up next is Candy Muse as Miss Arrogant. It really hurt my feelings that the judges didn't understand this look. Because uh-huh. as soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what she was referencing. Um, if you remember on her season in Untucked when she had that huge fight with Ken- uh, Tamisha Amon, uh-huh. remember Tamisha called her arrogant. 
And then Candy went across the room and said, am I arrogant to you? Am I arrogant to you? Am I arrogant to you? Ask it everybody around the room. And the color scheme of this outfit is the same color scheme of the outfit she was wearing in that Untucked episode. So it really wow. upset at me when the judges didn't uh, notice that reference when I caught it immediately. Maybe they don't watch Untucked. But here's the thing. Candy went on Twitter, I think the day of or the day after, and was like, that argument that her and Tamisha had is the reason why they won the first Emmy for Untucked. Oh. So, baby, how how y'all going to... How y'all gonna forget who gave y'all your first Emmy for Untucked? That, that's what got me. I'm like, ooh, hush, honey. Ooh, mm. hush. But yes, 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 yes. I like the look. But I will say this is a very similar silhouette that we've gotten from Candy all season. All season. All season. And I'm shocked they haven't said anything about it. They haven't clocked it. The only time they clocked it was during the ball. And they were like, oh, your three looks had the same silhouette. Mm -hmm. But every look has had pretty much this same silhouette. Stunning, as always. Mm -hmm. But it's the same silhouette that we've been seeing. Yeah. And then Miss Man Pig, Alexis Michelle. I really enjoyed the hanky code reference with the Mm -hmm. gown. I thought this was stunning on her. But again, this is just another gown. (laughs) I'm like, can we get a little variety, sis? Just a little bit. <laughs> uh, but what did you think of Alexis's look here? Um, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. Other than that, it's a beautiful dress. <laughs> okay, and last but definitely not least, we have Miss Tits McGee, two thousand and three, Jimbo. <laughs> now here's the thing. I think this look is so cute. It um, is. Uh, this is uh, That's probably the largest breastplate I've ever seen. Yes. And Jimbo said it was a size Z. Yes. And, and those like, exist in real life. And I'm like, Jesus, be a biscuit. Mm, that poor woman's back. That part. But my thing, my only thing is we've seen this look from Jimbo. How many times? I, I I was hoping with this Miss fill in the blank, she could have came up with something a little bit more outside the box. Mm. But this is classic Jimbo. It is stunning. So it still right. gets a toot for me. It still gets a toot. What did you think mm-hmm. of this look? I liked it. I mean, she leaned into it and you knew it was predictable in that you knew, you know, because her thing is boobs. Yeah, I just felt like, you know, just surprise us a little bit. That's all. I just want right. to be surprised. I mean, you did a good job last week. No breastplate. The, the nice little slim, slender outfit. So, we have our six queens here. Who had your favorite look? La La Ri. La La Ri. I believe my favorite look. Yeah, I'm about to go with La La Ri on this one. Yeah, I'm. Cl- I was close to picking Kahana. It's just the 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 prompt don't mix, don't match the yeah. outfit, and that's exactly. the part that throws me out of it the most. Mm-hmm. That's the part that throws me out of it the most. So we find out that the winner of this week's challenge is La La Ri. Do we agree? Woo! Yes, I agree wholeheartedly. This was La yes, La's definitely. Week. She did an amazing job, but. We find out that the bottom two, if my mouse will act accordingly, there we go, is Kahana yeah. Montrese and Alexis uh-huh. Michelle. Do we agree with this bottom two placement? I agree with her being there. Who is her? Say Alexis. It. Alexis. All right, then who would you... <gasps> Hello, who would you replace Kahana with? Say her name. Say her name. Say her <laughs> name. Say you know her what? Name. It probably would have been Candy, only because Candy has played herself the whole time. 
And I agree. I think the bottom two this week should have been Alexis Michelle and Candy Muse. Um, I do agree. She's been playing Candy each time. Um, she still did a good job, but I, yeah. put her, I, I think she should have been in the bottom this week. But yeah. Um, so we find out that Kahana and Alexis is the bottom two. So you walk into the ladies' room, you see these two names. Which lipstick are you pulling? I mean, in all honesty, I'd probably get rid of Alexis just because I'm tired of seeing her cry for the last three weeks. <laughs> you sound like me. Because it's just like, yeah, this is Kahana's fourth time in the bottom. But she still has a win. You don't. And plus, you keep crying so much. Yep. Like, sis, there's only so much I can take. But at the same mm-hmm. time, Kahana was ready to pack her bag. So what if I? What if she stays and then she actually leaves next week? It's like so many things to put into, in, to put into place when you're making this decision. And honestly, realistically, I think I would have chosen Kahana. Yeah, if, I mean, in real life, it I think been honestly. Kahana. Regardless how I'm playing the game at this point, because you were Uh ready to go. Now, granted, I don't think you should have been in the bottom two. No. But you're there. And you were ready to go. So what if I don't send you home now and you end up leaving next week? Then Alexis could have stayed. You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. So I I think I would have chosen Kahana at the end of the day. So we get to see them make their selections. They're like, oh, who did I pick? Let's drop it in here. Okay. Oh, me. La La Ree walks up. She's making her decision, and it's time to hit the main stage. So unfortunately, the lip sync assassin was spoiled for me. Uh huh. Because when I got up on Friday morning, I'm like, okay, let me go ahead and watch Drag Race. I accidentally clicked on Untucked instead of the actual All Stars. And they started playing a little preview. And guess what the preview was? George is getting out of the van. I'm like, oh, hell. Well, I know who the lip sync assassin is. So, bloop, bloop. And it's, hello, this. It's George's. Hello, this. And, honey, RuPaul must really love season 14. Because this is the third week in a row we've had a season 14 girl. Jasmine. They were a really good group. Nigeria <laughs> and now Georgia's. But you know, rumor has it they asked them all to do all stars and they said no. Hmm. So well, guess- it was too soon. But so I guess they were like, you know what? I'll do a lip sync assassin. That's no problem. That part. So the, the Georgia's is up there and we find out that the lip sync song is about damn time. Let me stop because we've already gotten like two copyrights. Oh, honey, and I don't, I don't know what they be for. They're not against us anymore. I fixed those. Huh? I said I fixed them. They're not against us anymore. But um, yes, these. What did you think of this lip sync? Um. You know what? It was a good lip sync. Overall, a really good lip sync, yeah. I think Lala gave what she needed to give in order to win. Lala and Georgia was song's just kind energy. of like, I'm here, I'm cute, and I'm going to dance around because I'm getting paid regardless. Yeah, Lala matched the energy of the song. Georgia, well, yeah, I think, she wasn't I think doing, this song was like handpicked for her, honestly. And, and, um, like, Georgia was doing fine, but she she wasn't embracing the energy of the song. No. It really gave much of, uh, gave me, it reminded me of the season 14 lip sync uh, Deja Vu against her, Deja Sky, and um, Diabetti. Uh-huh. It's just like she couldn't connect with the song, and I just don't feel like she fully connected. She moved beautifully. Yeah. And she did an unnecessary dip. But yeah. overall, it was a good lip sync from both. But Lala ate that up. Yes. Ate it up. And I'm so glad we got to see Lala lip sync this season because she ate it up on season 13 in her lip syncs too. Mm-hmm. But yes, the queens are clapping. The judges are clapping. 
RuPaul makes her decision, and La La Re, you're a winner, baby. Yeah. So you get a cash tip of ten thousand simoleons. Oh, a cash tip of ten thousand doll hairs. <laughs> Plus the 5,000 doll hairs that you've won earlier. That is 15,000 doll hairs in one night. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. Not bad at all. George, thank you for coming and hanging out with us. And she heads to the back of the stage. So the queens come up on the main stage. And La La Ree has to make her decision. And she chose Kahana Montrese. Yeah. So that means we must say goodbye to Miss Kahana. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed seeing her again. I'm really glad mm-hmm. she got a, ch- a second chance to redeem herself and show the world what she can really do. Mm-hmm. Um, I know right now there's some online beef between her and Heidi. I wish them both the best. Um, but yeah, I would love to see her again a couple years down the line. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Thank you for coming to see us, Kahana. And it's now time for the Fame Games. Category is Miss Fill in the Blank. Up first, we have Monica Beverly Hills giving us Miss Sunlight on the Skin, which was a reference to her season five acting challenge that I believe she went home for. Uh, <laughs> um, but the look You know, it's cute. always good when you get on All Stars and you can make a reference back to what sent you home. <laughs> yeah. But this was cute. This was cute. Mm-hmm. It was kind of basic looking. A little basic, but I still enjoyed. I enjoyed. Up next is Nisha Lopez as Miss Shady Lady. Oh, I ate this. I loved every second of this. And the fact that the dress is made out of eyeglass, eye shades, things. Oh, my goodness. This was so fun. And I love how she got some of the most shadiest things ever said right there. Like, this is... This is so good. This was so good. <laughs> what did you think of Nasha's look this week? That is gorgeous. Gorgeous. You can't gorgeous. even tell it's made out of the eyeglass shades until you start looking. Right? S- such a good job. Such a good job. Up next is Mrs. Kasha Davis giving us Mrs. Senior Center. And then it was a reveal to Miss Ariana Grandma. Um, you kind of saw that coming. I like the first look. Uh huh. I wish she would have just fully committed to the Miss Senior Citizen. Uh, Miss yeah, Senior I'd Center. have been like Miss Shady Pines. And it's just like Miss Ariana Grandma, really. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I have to boot the second half, but I, I did enjoy the first half. Especially since the boots don't go. It really don't. That that was weird. So, up next is Darian Lake giving us Miss Shapin. I love this. This is so <laughs> editorial to me. I just... Again, I say this, I said it last week and I'm going to say it again this week. So far, Darian has my vote for the Fame mm. Games. She's been slaying every week. But I don't know, Kahana's been eating up these runways. So, she might come into this Fame Game and might sneak through and get my vote. We're going to have to see. Let's see. But yeah, Miss Darian Lake, what did you think of Darian's look here? It's good. Mm -hmm. It's a little fluffy. (laughs) A little fluffy. It's a little fluffy. Up next is James Mansfield as Miss Queen of the Ring. This look is inspired by Rick and Charlotte Flair. Ah. You know, I. You could have did it a little bit better. You know, I'm going to say, I would have went for a wrestling inspired look as well. Uh-huh. I like this look. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's trash, but I wish right. she I wish she would have like really shown Committed. us what's under the robe because I'm like the whole time I'm like take off the robe. I know there's something under there. Take off the robe. Yeah, because you can see it. But she never did. <laughs> she never did. And that is our episode. Ooh. But yeah, next week they're doing a design challenge based on all the win not all the winners, but some of the winners from Drag Race. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see what they come up with. But it makes me worried for those who don't so. But hey, I think this was this is a good place to stop. So, Krisha May, where can they find you on the social media websites? 
You can find me at Carisha McGill. That's C R E S H A M C G I L L on all social media. And you can find me on all social media platforms at Simply Desmond. That's S I M P L Y D E S M O N D. Thank you so much for spending a piece of your day with us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see y'all later. Bye. Bye.